Hey guys, how you doing? Um, Pastor Paul Begley here. We had a great uh, conference um, in Springfield, Missouri with uh, Dr. Michael Lake and uh, his conference was incredible, incredible. And we really enjoyed it. And uh, God really moved. The fire of God fell. I'm in the uh, Al famous Atlanta airport that uh, is so frustrating. Um, I'm here. We just found out our pilot is sick. The pilot is sick and they don't have a pilot. So they're trying to find a pilot on this Saturday evening who would like to come in and work overtime and fly us home to Orlando. Here we go again with Atlanta. Anyway, let me put this out real fast. Um, Benjamin Netanyahu spoke about an hour and a half ago. And of course, as we know, the the intensity now of the war with Hamas is really doing just that, getting intense. He announced to the world that this is the second stage of escalation. And um, man, the last three days, he's really pounded northern Gaza Strip um, and has destroyed hundreds of buildings, including about 150 tunnels uh, including significant uh, amount of Hamas fighters and Hamas infrastructure. But there's more to go. And so he will continue now, stage two, which is attacking uh, Hamas from the air, the land, and the sea. Uh, and just, it's like, a, he's not going to do this massive office, uh, uh, mass fast offensive, which would just be disastrous and deadly to uh, the Israeli soldiers. Instead, he's doing the, the crush and creep. Okay, I'm going to call it that. I don't even know if that's a military term, but a crush and creep. Crush and creep. By doing that, what he does is he, for, first of all, the civilians are fleeing to get out of there, except the ones that have been told they have to stay because they're the human shields. And that's why the death toll will continue to rise. It's unfortunately, it's terrible. Hamas is to blame. Hamas is to be held accountable for the whole thing. But uh, certainly even, even as we speak with the death toll to the Palestinian uh, civilians, we pray for them. We've been praying for them. They're under, they, they are under the oppressor of Hamas. Of course, the Hebrew word for Hamas is violence. Um, so violent. Anyway, so as the Israeli soldiers continue to move forward with their tanks, as, as the uh, Israeli planes continue to blast away, as the Israeli's Navy continues to tighten up uh, and choke the Hamas regime, you're starting to hear the cries. You're starting to hear the enemies of Israel start to whine and cry. I'll start with Turkey's President Erdogan. What a wimp he is. And what a hypocrite he is. He's supposed to be a member of NATO. <laughs> Why don't they kick them out of NATO? Why doesn't NATO kick Turkey out? I guess you keep your enemies close, your friends close and your enemies close, is all I can figure. But he's whining now. He's crying. He's whining. He's hollering. Israel, war crimes. We're hearing the woe wo and the cry coming out of Turkey. The Iranians are absolutely petrified. They grabbed the Hamas leaders and they went to Moscow and they went and met with the foreign ministers and the leadership of, of Russia looking for somebody to back them, looking for Russia to do more than just say, we're building a, an alliance. They're looking for Russia to join in to the fight to stop Israel from finishing the job on Hamas. So watch for Russia to do something soon, something to send a, send a signal to the United States and um, U.S. allies, which none of the rest of the allies don't seem to be too interested in helping Israel. It's, we're just down to America, basically. Uh, the other guys just seem to be... <clears throat> The French and the British, you know, and some of the others, they, they, the people would like to help Israel, but their governments are going to try to remain as, 
as neutral as it can. And I, and I understand the reason they're doing it is because they have so many immigrants that moved into those countries during President Barack Obama's Arab Spring that sent millions of uh, immigrants into Europe and then they couldn't assimilate. They wouldn't assimilate. So that's got uh, the entire European Union in a jam. Russia, meanwhile, uh, continues to do their thing in Ukraine. The, re the really, the big worry is what will China do? I mean, and so here's the thing. If you look at this from a Bible prophecy standpoint, we're in Psalms 83, okay? I, I made that proclamation. I predicted that's what it would be when I was in Birmingham, Alabama. I made that proclamation um, 10 days ago. Uh, I really, I really explained it in this conference here in Springfield, Missouri. We are in Psalms 83. The question is, will we just, will this just be a Psalms 83 war? Or are we, are we going to go right on in to Ezekiel 38? And that was my question to Dr. Chuck Misler back in October the 15th, 2015. And he, when I asked him what would be the next big biblical milestone, and he said, Psalms 83 and Ezekiel 38. Or, he said, Ezekiel 38 and Psalms 83. I said, well, which is it? And he said, well, we'll see. It could be the chicken or the egg. Basically, they're one and the same. One kicks off the other. I always felt like it would be Psalms 83, and, and, and yeah, that's exactly where we're at. But will it create Ezekiel 38 immediately or in over the next several months or does it or do we go into some kind of peace arrangement after this is done and then the armies regroup and make their attack on Israel uh, like they do in Ezekiel 38 that's yet to be seen that's the question but right now if you guys are thinking Israel's going to go home Israel's going to finish off Hamas, but they will be hated on. There will be resolutions passed by the United Nations against them. Even President Biden will condemn them for saying they went too far. They, they went too far. Um, but Israel will finish the job. They have no choice. And if you look at it prophetically, it's exactly what the scripture says will happen. So pray for the peace. Sure, I'm praying for the peace of the Middle East every day. I'm praying for the peace of Jerusalem. I'm praying for the peace with all people. But if you want me, if you ask me what's gonna happen from a prophecy standpoint, I'm telling you, it has begun. It's, it's not just begun now. Psalms 83 is in play. Let's see where it goes from there. If you're watching and you're not saved, please, Give your life to Jesus Christ, please, please, before it's too late, okay? Are you serious? Please. And uh, I pray for all the uh, Israeli families who've been, whose loved ones were slaughtered by Hamas, the 1400. I pray for the hostages that are being held by Hamas right now. I pray for the Israeli soldiers and their families as they confront this evil. And I pray for the Palestinian people, the innocent civilians who are just caught in the crossfire and need our prayers. God bless all of you. I'll be back home, hopefully tomorrow morning to preach at the uh, Freedom Fellowship. And that is gonna be uh, under the big tent. That's providing they find us a pilot. They need a pilot. Should I try to fly that? Should I try to fly that plane? <laughs>